You are watching Cable 10, Aurora, Illinois Community Access Channel. Aquil, Aquil, best value, reasonable price. Oh! All right, all right. Welcome to Ark World. I'm your excellent host, Klinger, and with me as always is Cohen. Party on, Klinger. Party on, Cohen. So, Cohen, before we get started, have you checked out the new album by the band called Think Droid, called Hope You Were There? Love that royalty-free music. Yeah, I've been listening to it constantly. It's great to listen to something and also talk about it without fear of copyright infringement. All right. All right. In this episode, we're going to talk about what companies can do to succeed in the government. We have a special guest here in a few minutes who's been with the government for a long time, talked to a lot of different companies, so you, you're going to want to stick around for that. But first, I want to show you a new segment we have called Far World. All right! Far World! Far World! It's a book! It's where the great! All right! All right, well, let's review some ways you can read the Federal Acquisition Regulation, or the FAR. Okay, well, first we have the paper FAR. Back to basics. Nice. Yeah, ooh. I like the way the paper feels on my fingers. I like the way it smells. He shoots, he scores, all right. I want my baby FAR, baby FAR, baby FAR, baby FAR, baby FAR, all right. Okay, next up we have Chat GPT. Hmm. Instead of a book, we have a laptop with a lot of knowledge. I think it's a pretty gnarly way to research the FAR. What do you think, Klinger? I do too, Cohen. But I also ponder the impact of generative AI on our society and whether our reliance on the insurmountable amount of knowledge will impact our understanding of what we're reading. But yeah, I think it's pretty gnarly too. All right. Right on. Last up, we have acquisition.gov. Right on. Uh, acquisition.gov is uh, it's pretty good, too. Yeah, it's great. Extreme far close-up. Whoa! 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 All right. Yeah, okay. Well, let's bring on our first guest. His name is Will Roberts, and he's been working 15 years in acquisition. He was a contracting officer, but he also led acquisition and contracting offices in the Department of Defense. As he's had numerous conversations with companies, and he's got some advice on what companies can do now to be more successful with the government. So, without further ado, welcome Will Roberts. Great to have you here, Will. Uh, great to be here. Though I'm sitting kind of far from you guys. Can I get a little closer? Whoa, whoa. No can do, my friend. We don't have the special effects budget for that. Yeah. Well, maybe someday. Like and subscribe. So, Will, you've been working in the government for a while, right? Yes, that's right. Let me ask you something, then. Worthless bureaucrat says what? What? A worthless bureaucrat says what? What? Exactly. Okay, well, what knowledge do you have to impart to our fine viewers? Yeah, sure. Uh, during my time in the government, I've worked with a lot of companies. I've seen a lot of succeed. I've seen a lot fail. And I'd like to share with you some tips and tricks from my perspective. And I'd like to use an album that you actually mentioned. Hope you were there. Is that okay? Yeah, that would be excellent. Okay, great. Now I'm going to bring notes with me here. <clears throat> So take the track, Welcome to the Machine, for example, from the album. In many ways, the federal acquisition system operates like a machine, that you have to learn how to operate with skill. There's rules, processes, cultures within the contracting offices. Now, the government professionals, like program managers, contracting officers, they have to be skilled in operating this machinery in order to get things to work. Companies are no exception. The successful ones know how to work the machine. Sometimes it feels like to deal with the government, it sets you up in flames, kind of like that picture on the album cover. But really, think about it this way. Everybody, companies and government, we're all in the same boat. We all have to operate this bureaucracy. We all have to get things done with the machine. 
so we have to work together. So how do you understand this complicated machine? Well, luckily, there's a lot of free resources at your disposal to help you get specialized knowledge around using system for award management or filling out representations, certifications, things like that. Uh, there's Procurement Technical Assistance Centers, or PTACs. They're free, and they can help you out a lot with certain pieces of information. Now, it's likely that you're still going to want to invest in a consultant, some outside help to bolster the information uh, that you're getting from free resources like PTACs. The good consultants are going to tell you about those free resources so that, that you know that you're only paying for things that you need to pay for. The other thing that you uh, need to think about when you're operating the machine is that you can't assume that the government's going to know about your market or understand certain parts of, of your work. So you're just going to need to be patient and resilient with them. You're going to want to explain things to them so they can operate some aspects of your machine. Yeah, they're called bureaucrats, not bureau brats. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, let's look at another track from that same album, um, Comfortably Numb. Now, I can't count how many times an incumbent lost the re-competition because they got a little too lazy and submitted a bad proposal. This always perplexed me because incumbents seem to be in the best position to win a follow-on. They have the experience, they have the past performance, but a lot of times they get this comfortable numbness where they think they have the contract in the bag, they end up submitting a very poor proposal. Here's my tip. If you see an RFP for services that you know you can perform well, give it your all. Submit the very best proposal your resources and time allows. Now, I've also seen many companies miss opportunities to win contracts because they felt that another company had it in the bag when they really didn't. Now, the appearance of unfair competition is something that the government really needs to work on. But the truth is a lot of companies just don't submit a proposal because they think that the government is doing some kind of formality when they really have a company in mind most cases, or at least in a lot of cases, that's just not the case. The truth is that most contracting offices want multiple proposals from really good companies because they know that good competition yields better prices, more innovative responses, and just an overall better result. But the incumbent ends up winning in many cases because some really good players end up forfeiting the game before it's even begun. So submit your best and don't underestimate poor proposals from long-standing incumbents. You may end up winning because the incumbent got comfortably numb and you have a better solution. Finally, let's talk about another uh, track on that album called Another Brick in the Wall. That's a perfect point for companies. You don't want to be another brick in the wall. <clears throat> now, here's one of the best ways to stand out as a company, whether you're talking to a government employee, submitting a capability statement, or writing a formal proposal. Here's the three elements. One, state the government's problem and that you understand that problem. Two, provide how your product or service solves that problem. And three, explain the ultimate benefits and long-term impacts of your solution. It's that simple, right? But it's not very common to see that from companies. Now, it's true that the three components that I, I listed are kind of loaded components. For example, know the government's problem that requires a lot of work. You need to research, collaborate, build relationships with that agency to really understand what their problem is. And the problem includes their bureaucracy, security restrictions, internal architecture. A software application that works well in the private sector may not work as well in the government mission, and you need to know that. The program manager may not be as familiar with leading product teams or facilitating agile development. You need to be aware of these kind of manpower restrictions and know that you're going to have to provide a solution that helps solve some of those manpower restrictions in the government. When you know all of those things, you can really create an excellent solution. If you just focus on what your product or service does, you miss a huge piece in the solution. You have to follow up with how your product can be delivered and adopted in the government environment. That is huge and not very common from companies. Okay, so know the problem, explain your solution. The third piece is to provide the benefits or explain the benefits. This adds the extra oomph 
in your proposal or in your conversations or whatever you're doing when you communicate to the government. Okay. Now, what are some of the benefits that you can uh, explain to the government? Well, how will your solution impact their workforce? What are some of the other beneficial consequences to their mission? Is it going to save them maybe manpower hours when they use your solution and maybe allow them to focus on more meaningful work? Will your product position the agency uh, to a, a status of thought leadership in the government where other agencies can see what they're doing and, and want to replicate it? These are things that you may want to bring up and communicate to the agency. Things that they may not be thinking about when they look at your product, you want to connect those dots, provide that insight. So if you can draw out maybe one or two additional benefits, even indirect benefits, you'll really stand out from the other bricks in the wall. Okay, well, this makes me want to be a government contractor now. Yeah, so many opportunities. You can indeed. You know, there's really something for every market out there in government contracting. You just had to know how to operate the machine, how to not get too complacent, and then how to stand out from the crowd. All right, well, that concludes our show. Until next time. Hey, Klinger. Hey, Mr. McFar. Got some mail for you. From Lauren Michaels. What's Wayne's World?